Hi, this is Rochelle with Journal Life's Journey, and I am going to be making a Starbucks cover using one of these boxes that I'm upcycling. So here I'm just trimming off the flaps from the top and the bottom, prepping this Velveeta cheese, macaroni and cheese box for use if I decide to use that one. And I'm also going to trim up this Folgers box in case I decide to use this one. So I'm just trimming off the excess ends and getting it into a book cover format. And then on the Velveeta box, I'm peeling off some of the excess that was left on the inside. So here I have my two possible covers and I also have a paper bag from Starbucks. I have been collecting these bags for a while, so I have quite a few of them to work with. I'm just opening the bottom of this one. And here I was trying to tear it apart and then I decided it would be better just to cut it. So I cut it down the side to open it up. This is the end where the handles are. So I'm trying to tear those off carefully without ripping a hole through the actual bag. Eventually I figure out it's easier to pull off the paper that's on top of the handles first and then pull the handles off. So here you'll see me pulling that piece of paper off and then pulling the handles. Okay, so I've decided to use the macaroni and cheese box. And here I'm just dry fitting how I want the paper bag to go on the box to make my cover. And this will be a junk journal cover. And I am trying to use mostly upcycled or recycled items. So packaging, paper bags, the boxes from the kitchen, things like that. So here I'm just going ahead and trimming up the paper bag to the size that I need. Then I noticed that the face, the Starbucks logo face is on the wrong side. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments on how this works. I'm going to put this piece as the front piece and then the piece that I cut originally as the back. So I'm going to cover it with two separate pieces. Here I'm using Mod Podge. Um, as my glue to glue the paper bag to the box and I'm finding that I like using Mod Podge as a glue lately um, it's inexpensive and it works also I'm going to Mod Podge over the front of the paper bag too just to give it a nice seal so why not use it as a glue to glue the paper bag to the box to make my cover. So here I'm burnishing that glue, spreading out that glue, making sure I don't have air bubbles. And here I'm adding the back piece, dry fitting to see how I want it to line up. This is not going to be perfect. I'm just doing my best to patch the two together to make it work. So I'm trimming up and adding my posh to the spine and the back cover. And of course, I should have put one of my silicone mats down to help keep my cutting mat clean, but I didn't. I never think of it until I've already got glue all over my cutting mat. So here I'm just trying to remove some of the lumps 
from where the handles were on those covers and using my bone folder to smooth out the glue and get out any air bubbles. Still a little problem up there at the top with the bumps on that one, but here I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the wrap process and I am tearing off the excess. Just making sure the edge is glued down as well as it can be. And again, burnishing to make sure everything is sealed. No air bubbles and the glue is spread out. Have a problem with that back corner sticking. So I added more my Podge to that as well and just cleaning up where I got glue all over my mat. Okay, here I'm gonna go ahead and miter the corners. And when you do the mitering, make sure you don't get too close to the edge. Again, here I am adding more. I just didn't, I don't think I added enough glue but i really wanted to make sure that this was adhered to the paper bag really well so i'm adding more than i need at this point and then i finally decide to get one of the silicone mats out to do this and again i am burnishing 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 and i actually burnished too much on the back cover and burnished a hole in it but you'll see me patching that up later on and here I'm just scooping up some of the glue that oozed out and adding it to the flap where I'm going to fold that over to wrap the box. I don't know. I feel like I was extra sloppy with this, but I mean, I wasn't bothered by it. It just looking back at it now I was like why was I being so sloppy <laughs> but I was it's kind of difficult to be neat with the Mod Podge doing a cover like this so I just went with it I guess here I'm going to press down those corners so that they don't stick out and I have a nice clean corner when I fold over the other two flaps adding the Mod Podge to seal those down and getting up under the edge of my macaroni box and just using the momentum of the box to fold over and using my bone folder to press that down and make sure my corners are good and make sure that all of the flap is sealed well and running it along the edge just to make sure I have a nice clean edge Okay, so more Mod Podge on the last flap. And then we will fold all that over. Okay, again, taking my bone folder, making sure that that is burnished down really well. and spreading out the excess Mod Podge. Okay, and here I see there's a little opening where the two bags didn't seal together well. So I add Mod Podge in there and then I start applying the Mod Podge to the entire cover. Here I see where the there was a hole in the paper bag, so I went ahead and my posh over it and 
<laughs> then I just see that that's not going to help the situation. So I just tore off a teeny piece of paper bag to fill in that hole. And then I continue adding Mod Posh to the cover, making sure that I get a nice coating on it. When I was putting the Mod Podge on the outside, I could see where there were air bubbles. So I'm just taking my finger and rubbing on those air bubbles to rub them out. And then I also noticed that the hole was open again. So I put another piece of the paper bag on it um, to patch it up. And here again, I am pushing out those air bubbles. Okay, so... After I finish doing the outside, the outside is dry now. I am going to go ahead and do the inside. And I'm just doing a dry fit to try to figure out how I'm going to do the inside. I could use the whole sheet like it is now, or I could make two side panels and put fabric on the spine. And I'm just trimming it down so that I can get a better look and feel for what I have to work with and how it's going to look and make the decision on how I want to do the inside cover. And here I'm just squaring it up, tearing off the uneven edges. The next time I do this with the tearing, I'll probably just draw the line and use my scissors to cut it. I think that would be better. Here again, I am dry fitting. And somewhat measuring to see how it will fit. And I'm just going to tear the excess off again. So I finally decided, I didn't record it, but I finally decided to cut that one piece in half and use one on the front and one on the back and put fabric in the middle. I wanted to put the fabric on to help make sure that my spine is good and sturdy and that it doesn't tear. And I, so I just tore a piece of cotton fabric that I had and placed it on the spine, frayed the edges a little bit. And here I'm just covering the front panel or the front inside cover of the book. And this is what it's looking like. So I did the back, I did the front, and I added the fabric to the spine. So here I'm just pressing out the air bubbles, making sure the glue was spread evenly. And now I'm putting a coat of Mod Podge on the inside front and back cover. 
I'm being very careful not to get the glue on the fabric. And that is it. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. And this is what the final cover looks like. So I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And I will holler at y'all next time. Bye.